Welcome to Trick Your CNC Out, where we talk about the various ways you can improve upon the stock configuration of your Winfinity Elite. Today, let's install a tower light. So today we're installing a tower light. This is something I wish I'd done sooner. There are lots of times where, when I'm standing in different parts of the shop, not right in front of the CNC, where I'd like to know well, what's it doing right now. Is it running okay? Is it waiting for a tool change? Is the job over? All those sorts of things. And with the tower light, I get that and more. So um, we're going to go through what's required to do that, and then we'll actually go through the installation. So first, you need two main components. You need a tower light that is 24 volt capable. You'll need probably one with three lights, so you can make use of all of the types of alarm conditions that Maso can display. And you'll probably want a buzzer so you can hear it too. Um, you could get one that doesn't have a buzzer and you know they're just about the same price so I think it makes sense to get the one with the buzzer and then just not wire it up if you don't want to use it. And then you could always decide to wire it up later if you change your mind. That's probably a, just a safer investment. And then you're going to need a relay board with at least three relays. Now, Masso is really proud of theirs. It's pretty pricey, and they warn you against cheap relay boards. Um, they say the feedback from those boards can cause damage to the G3 controller. That thing at, you know, 1300 bucks or so is pretty expensive, and I'd rather just buy a little bit more expensive relay. Um, theirs is also designed to fit perfectly inside the G3 Touch enclosure, and the enclosure actually comes with standoffs to mount it on to begin with. So like they're already pre-installed waiting for a relay board to be put in. There's actually two sets of standoffs that would support two relay boards if you needed two of them in there. So that's awesome. Um, I went that way and um, you could certainly go a different direction and maybe do it a little bit more risky, but uh, you know, you do you. Now let's look at the installation. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, we'll try to go through everything. First things first though, let's make sure the power is off before we get started here. Um, okay, so this is, the, this is the spot in my use of the G3 where I decided to break power out a bit differently. Um, power comes from the Onefinity power supply into this first pin here on the red uh, power plug here. And when I say first, I mean the one on the left of this connector. And... Um, this is where if you're going to draw power to power anything other than really low power devices like probes or uh, tool setters, something along those lines, you would want to draw it off of here. But there's only those two connectors and they're both used. So I'm going to suggest that you put in some kind of a terminal block. Um, I use this one because I had it laying around and it only has the ability to break out one uh, one side of the power supply. In this case, I'm using the, the positive, the red. Um, I'm going to link to another one in the description that has the ability to link to, that uses ferrules, first of all, which is really nice, but um, also breaks out both positive and negative, so you can put your power in your ground on the same distribution block and get more, more access points for both of those. So... This red wire here is the one that comes from the Onefinity power supply into this thing. And it runs all the way down here. And I cut it in this neighborhood because that's where I was going to put this terminal block. On either end, you're going to want to install a ferrule or one of these, if you do something like what I did here, some number 10 rings and um, connect them to connect both ends to the terminal block. And that'll basically you know, get that connection back in order so that the Maso can power up. And now we've just, all we've done is inserted a distribution block here, a little terminal block, so we can draw power and, and ground, if you use the one I recommended, to um, to power up other devices. So now that we have that, let's power the relay. Now the relay here, these Maso relays are a little bit funny. They have two power blocks on them, one on the left and one on the right both on the top here, and they're built so that you can daisy chain one controller to another. And um, that's nice, but it's a little bit weird to me that 
in either case with the same connector, the, the red, the, the positive connector needs to be on top and the, the ground on the bottom. So if you were to actually unplug this and move it over to here and try to plug it in, it would have them backwards. And that would be a very bad problem. So you gotta be very careful here to make sure your red's always on the top and you're not gonna be swapping these back and forth. Um, so that's something very, very important to pay attention to. So red's on the top, ground's on the bottom. In my case, I ran the ground back to the Maso, which is fine to do if you have open ground spots, but uh, it's probably a more scalable solution if you use the terminal block to do that. Um, now, <clears throat> I also ran a ground using a red fuse holder, which is probably, I should use maybe a black fuse holder, um, to my 22-4 wire that goes back to the, the light tower, and we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. Um, and I put a 750 milliamp fuse in here just to have a, a little extra, you know, precaution here, I guess. And um, I connected that to the black conductor into this 22-4. Now, that 22-4, let's, let's hold there for just a second. I just used some 22-4 head laying around, and it's nothing special. If I was going to buy something specific for this job, I'd probably buy shielded plenum wrapped cable, and I'll link to some of that as well. But really, you don't have to get fancy. Uh, any 22-4 is probably going to work. It's just a little bit safer option to use the shielded and plenum wrapped, both from a fire perspective and from an EMI perspective. But, you know, it's just a tower light. It's, I'm not worried about what happens if it acts funny. So any old 22-4 is probably do fine. Okay, so now that we have that, um, I'm going to look at the other leads going into the, the you know, from that 22-4, from the tower light, into the bottom of the relay. So I'm going to use these first three, th first three relays, and the colors in your 22-4 could be red, white, or sorry, green, white, and red, or they might be green, yellow, and red, and either way, we'll use them essentially the same way. On the normal open in the center of each of these terminals on these relays, we're going to wire kind of color coding them according to our alarm. So the first one will be red in the center. I'm sorry, green in the center. Boy, I got to get my colors right. The next one will be yellow or white in the center. And the last one will be red in the center for the red alarms. Now, I took another wire off of my terminal block and I jumpered it into the common here so that on each of these relays. And if you look, so if you see it there, I have two wires in that ferrule, two wires in that ferrule, and one here, because I just jumpered them across like that to use one connection off my, my terminal block. If you don't like that, you can run independent cables all the way back to the terminal block, and that would be fine too, but there's really nothing wrong with this either. It just you know, saves me some, some wiring and some ports on that terminal block. So now we have our light connected. And we're good there. We just now need to connect the controller to the relay so it can trigger the right alarms at the right times. So I'm going to use TTL outputs 14, 15, and 16 for green, yellow, that's the white wire here, but yellow alarm, and red alarm. And uh, I'm going to, again, put these in sequence, green, yellow, red for my triggers to trigger the green, yellow, red outputs. And that is all there is to it. We have it wired up. Let's take a look at the tower light. Okay, here we are at the light tower and you can see how I have this wired up here. I have on the left, three wires going into the same crimp connector and you can use whatever kind of connectors you want. I like these cause they're easy. You just squeeze them with a pair of pliers and they couple these two wires together. But I have the red from the 22-4 and the red and orange for the, from the, from the light tower. That's the red alarm and the buzzer. So I'm going to fire both of those off when we get power to the red wire. And then that's kind of a blue green uh, from the light tower and green in the 22-4. So when we get the signal from on the green wire, 
we're gonna power up the blue green wire which will light the green light and then black is black that's our ground so black to black in that one and then when we get a signal on the white wire which we wire to our yellow alarm it's going to go short over to the, or connect over to the yellow wire which goes to the yellow light and that is it on this just four quick crimps and you're done okay now we're powering on to take a look at what the setup looks like and once you get this working you'll notice i immediately have the buzzer going right off the jump here and i'm going to go ahead and hit the e-stop to shut that up pull it out and i'm still getting the you can hear the relay clicking and it's just blinking that yellow light on the tower i'll show you that here in a little bit but what we'll do is we'll go to the setup and get rid of the password. And uh, we wanna look at our TTL outputs. And we can see here we have output four is set up for green, a tower light green, or sorry, output 14 is set up for tower light green. 15 is set up for tower light yellow and it's blinking like crazy right now. And 16 I have set up for tower light red. And once you get those set up, it's done. That's nothing more to it. This is a pretty easy install. 